another episode in a radio series based on the world-famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. <laughs> With Wilfred Bramble as Albert and Harry H. Corbett as Harold. This week, Men of Letters. Come on, it's your go. Well, I can't go. Well, I can. Well, all right, then go. Don't sit there gloating. I don't know why I bother to play Scrabble with you. I really don't. Go on, put your word down. What's that, what's that, what's that, what's that? B-U-M-Bum. <laughs> That's B. Four, five, six, seven, triple letter score, double word score, that's sixteen and fourteen, thirty. What a filthy mind you have got. What's wrong with that? It's vulgar. That's what's wrong with it. Honestly, I mean, this is supposed to be an erudite game to increase one's word power. Look at that board. It's disgusting. <laughs> There's not one word you've put down that can be used in decent company. Not one word of more than four letters. That board is nothing less than a display of unadulterated filth. They still count, though, don't they? <laughs> oh, no, they don't. Oh, yes, they do. If they're in the dictionary, they count, and bums in the dictionary. <laughs> it's your go. I'm not so sure that bum is in the dictionary. I mean, you don't think all them professors up at Oxford would waste their time discussing the merits and the meanings of the word bum. <laughs> they wouldn't use dirty words like that. My bum's not dirty. <laughs> what I mean is, my bum is the American word for tram. Ah, ah well, now, that's what I've got you. You is not allowed to use colloquialisms or slang. In that case, I'll stick by the English bum. <laughs> that being the part of the anatomy that fills out the back of your trousers. <laughs> your go. Oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, I can't compete with this sort of thing. If I'd have thought this game was going to degenerate into a mere catalogue of crudities, I wouldn't have started it in the first place. You're just not because I'm winning. Well, of course, if you don't care what sort of words you use, that's not difficult. I mean, look at the difference between the quality of my words and your words. At least I'm having a go at keeping the tone up. You're not winning, though, are you? That's what it's all about, mate. You haven't won yet. There's still a long way to go. Now, let's see, what letters have I got here? Z, Y... <laughs> you can't go, can you? I might be able to. The words I have in mind takes a bit of working out. Have you got an S? Supposing I have. Well, you could put it on the end of my bum and make it bums. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not if you don't mind. You get a triple letter score. I don't care. That's not the way to play the game. Well, hurry up then. All right, all right. Uh, at least I can clean your last word up. B U M P S. Bumps. Three and one, and a triple letter score makes seven. Lovely, that let me in nice. S O D sod. <laughs> triple letters, three, S one, D two, six altogether. You go. I'm not allowing sod. Why not? Piece of turf, nothing wrong with that. Shakespeare uses it. I don't care if Barbara Cartland uses it. <laughs> That's not the way you meant it. You meant it as a swear word. You always mean them as swear words because you are dirty and crude and horrible. You go. I can't go. I can see one. I'm not interested. Have you got a blank? I'm not telling you. Well, if you have, use that as a K and then you... No! Got... <laughs> I will not stoop to using obscenities. <laughs> Besides, you've already used it. <laughs> so you can't go then? I didn't say that, did I? I think I shall change all of my letters. You can't. There's only three left. All right, then I'll change three of them. Might be worse than the ones you've got. I doubt it. Now, what are we here? Quizzed? Jewagux. <laughs> well, I suppose if I was Polish, I might be able to have a stab at it. You can't go, can you? No, I can't. And I can. C-R-U-M. What's that? Crumb. Crumb? <laughs> Yeah. What do you get in bed when you've been eating biscuits? <laughs> Do not spell it like that. Don't you? 
There's a B on the end of it. Is there? No wonder you only put filthy words down. Did anyone who can spell? It's my go. No, it's not. I can still go. What's that word you've put down there? P-E-T. Pet. Good. Move crumb in front of that. And there you are. C-R-U-N-P-E-T. <laughs> Crumpet. Which you, which you also get in bed. <laughs> There are three, four, five, and there's eight, and three's eleven, twelve, thirteen, triple letter and a double score. Twenty-nine altogether. That's five hundred and twenty-three to me and fifty-six to you. <laughs> I'm winning. Pick up the last three letters you threw away. Well, you won't make anything out of them. You'll go. I can't go. You know I can't go. Never can you. Yes, I can. Get out of it. Two K's and an N I threw away. What can you make out of them? Da di da di da, da di da di da. Knickers. Oh. <laughs> I'm out. That's 50 points for using all my letters, plus 18 for knickers. That's 591 altogether, less your 56. That's uh, 535 I've won by, at a penny a point. That's £5.35 you owe me. Do you want another game? No. It's a good game, ain't it? It is when it's played properly. Well, not when it's played by dirty old men like you. Who's that? Stone me. Every time there's a knock on my door, you say, Who's that? It's a very annoying habit. How do I know it is? I haven't got X-ray eyes. I shall go out and open the door. If it's got anything remotely to do with you, I shall tell you who it is. Well, if you don't go and answer it, neither of us will know who it is. All right, all right. Don't knock the door down, you great heavy ended Hello, Vicar. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Steptoe. Inclement weather, is it not? Oh, yes. Most inclement, yes. It is on nights like this that one's thoughts go out to our sailors and fishermen. Yes, indeed. Must be very empty out there. <laughs> I wouldn't fancy it. Nor I, indeed, no. It's funny, ain't it? How we all takes a bit of fish for granted, don't we? We do, we do. Yes, indeed, we do. Yes. yes. Hardly a thought to be spare for those brave souls. Quite, quite. How much do you want? <laughs> Pardon? Uh, I thought you was collecting. Oh, goodness me, no. Oh, well, you better come in, then. <laughs> Thank you. You're most kind. Can I take your hat and coat? Who was he? The vicar. Now, God, is he on the ear all again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, he's my father. He knows you're here. It's just his joke. Oh. Oh, this way, down the hall, into the lounge. He's had two bob off me this year already. He must think I'm made of father. Oh, God. <laughs> Hello, Vicar. I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. <laughs> your suit, I mean. Uh, well, it's a nice one, isn't it? Not one of ours, is it? I beg your pardon. You didn't get it off that sackful we gave you for the Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame you if you did. Your needs are as great as theirs are, aren't they? Father, the vicar is hardly likely to nick clothes intended for refugees. Oh, I didn't mean anything. He hasn't got much, has he? I mean... Father, uh, would you like to go and make a cup of tea? It's rather inclement out. Tea? He don't want tea, do you, vicar? Have something to keep the cold out. I was just going to pour one when you come in. Here you are. Nice drop of gold watch. Thank you very much. Well, may God bless you and the devil miss you. <laughs> Don't give me one, will you? Would you care to sit down, Vicar? Thank you. Oh, Scrabble, my favourite game. Uh, you've just finished, I see. Oh, no, please. K and... <laughs> please, please, please. please, please. <laughs> You're a very high standard, I'm afraid. Oh, we haven't got the command of words like what you have got. Uh, perhaps you'd both like to come round to the vicarage one evening. My wife is a very keen player. We could make a foursome. Oh, up. yeah, I'd like that. Uh, no, I don't think that's a very good idea. <laughs> you'd be much too good for us. <laughs> you'd crucify us. I mean... I'm... <laughs> <laughs> How is your knees? Oh, greatly improved, thank you. The vicar has had a touch of his housemaid's knee again, Father. <laughs> oh, I am sorry. Yes, an occupational hazard, I'm afraid. 
One has to do a great deal of kneeling in my game. You want to get your missus to sew some pads inside your trousers. She wants to use one of her padded bras. <laughs> Cut it in half, strap them round your kneecaps. They fit lovely. I knew a carpet layer who swore by them, and he reckons... Later, be... I'm sure the vicar can make his own medical arrangements. <laughs> Why don't you go out and put a blanket over the horse? Then go to bed. Now, I want to talk to the vicar. Then kindly moderate your language. That's quite all right, Mr Steptoe. I've been long enough in the parish not to be shocked by the vernacular. One cannot expect Mayfair in Oil Drum Lane. They're rough diamonds but the salt of the earth. That is broad-minded of you. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so what do we have the pleasure of this visit, then? I mean, if it's about me not coming to church, I don't believe I have made my position clear to you in the past. I mean, whilst I have nothing personal against you, intellectually, I'm like Bertrand Russell before me, a humanist, and consequently, I find myself uh, unable to subscribe to the Christian ethos and dogma. Yes, yes, I remember our conversation that evening very well, very cogently reasoned, I thought. I remember your argument that Pascal and Calvin were, um... Burks, I believe you said, <laughs> <laughs> made a great impression on my wife. Oh, did, did I say that? Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry. Not at all. One often gets carried away in a theological discussion. Yes, but I, I should not have used language like that. P please, apologise to your wife. And uh, if you could explain, I was a bit et up, and your hospitality was on the generous side, and I was a wee bit Brahms and List. <laughs> <laughs> Brahms and List. I shall tell her. Now look what you've done. No, Mr. Septo, the reason for my visit is quite different. Uh, frankly, I have come to ask a favour of you. Anything, please, don't hesitate to ask. As you may know, uh, this week we are celebrating the centenary of our church. Get away. <laughs> yes, 100 years of bringing the good word to the people of Shepherd's Bush. Yes, a great deal has changed since then. Yeah, you're getting a lot of competition from the Muslims now, aren't you? <laughs> well, it's true. They were pouring out of that converted cinema last week. Looked just like a bus carriage, it did. I don't regard that as competition. All the great religions of the world are there for the glory of God. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Are there? Well, I wish he'd put a few up here. The living conditions are diabolical. Yes, I am cognizant of the problem. However... Yes, go on, Vicar. Uh, we have decided to publish a special enlarged edition of the Parish magazine. What a good idea. And I shall need all the contributions I can get. I thought so. How much you want? <laughs> no, 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 I mean articles. Articles for inclusion. My wife thought it would be rather nice if we had articles about some of the more exotic trades and professions carried out in the Parish throughout the years... And, as you are one of the oldest established firms in the area, we wondered whether one of you would care to write about the history of rag and boning in Shepherd's Bush. Oh, I should be delighted. So would I. Father, I think I'd better write it. I know more it. about it than you do. No, you don't. And you can't write as well as I can either. I was always top of the class at composition, you know that. I always got nine out of ten. I got a gold star once. Oh, very good. Ah, oh, yes. I mean, words has always been my strong point. You leave it to me, Vicar. I want to do it. Well, you can't. You'd have to do something else, won't you? I want to do the article. Well, you're not going to do the article. I'm the artistic one in this house. Cobblers, you can't even spell. Who can't? <laughs> you can't. I can spell better than you Who can. Who can? Oh, I can. No, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. All right, then. Spell chrysanthemum. A what? C-H-R-I-S-T, Christ, Christ. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a C-K-H-R. Well, I'm, I'm hardly likely to use a word like chrysanthemum in an article about rag and bone. That's where you're wrong, because Charlie Harris's horse is called chrysanthemum. I don't care. I won't mention him. Well, you can't write an article about rag and bone without mentioning Charlie Harris. He'd be furious. His family's been at him longer than ours. But I shall say, Charlie Harris and his horse. Because you can't spell chrysanthemum. I can look it up in the dictionary. How can you look it up in the dictionary when you can't spell it? I'll get somebody to spell it for me, then I'll look it up. <laughs> How do you spell mullable? I'm not interested in spelling mullable. That's bottled Ferrari's horse. I don't give a toss whose horse it is. <laughs> and what was the name of his horse in 1932? I don't know. And what was the name of Chunky Spooner's horse? I don't know. Well, you should do, because I got a red rosette in Hyde Park in 1911. 
How many horses and carts followed Arthur Philpott's coffin in 1928? 23. 36. Oh. Dad, you don't know nothing. You can't spell. You're not qualified. I've been a rag and bone man all my life. What's up, boy? I was a rag and bone man before you was born. I'll be a rag and bone man after you're dead. How do you know? Because I'm going to kill you if you don't shut up. Well, <laughs> don't you both write it. You keep out of it. Oh. <laughs> so, sorry, but, but I, I, I beg your pardon. I, I forgot you was here. No, 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 it wouldn't work. I mean, I couldn't collaborate with him. I mean, one cannot undertake creative work with somebody who gets on your threepenny bits as much as he does. <laughs> well, this needs the judgment of Solomon. You're going to chop him in half? <laughs> Why don't you toss for it? I'll spin. Uh, you call, Mr. Steptoe. Heads. Tails. Ah, ah, you lot, you lot, you lot, you lot. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, you great yeah. big Nelly, I'm what are you? <laughs> yeah. You want to get back in your cot, mate. Uh, don't get upset, Mr. Steptoe. We'd still like a contribution from you. Would you? Of course. Anything? Of course, anything you like. Right, you're on. I'll go and do it now. Uh, good night, Mr. Steptoe. Uh, thank you for the drop of uh, gold watch. Anytime. Well, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I was thinking my article out. I'll see you out, Vicar. Oh, thank you. Uh, can I illustrate my article with photographs? Yes, that would be delightful. Oh, thank you. I'm sure you'll be pleased with it. I'm sure I shall. My teacher was always complimenting me on my literary style. I was thinking of taking up journalism when I left school, but old misery guts wouldn't let me. <laughs> they wouldn't let me do anything. Still, I suppose 12 was a trifle young. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Steptoe. I shall look forward to reading your article. Good night, Vicar. Oh, this could be the start of a new career. Oh, Gordon Bennett! Uh, what's all this rubbish? That's my research. Reference books, taped interviews, photographs. I've interviewed and photographed every totter within two miles. I don't mess about, mate. When I do a thing, I do it properly. How much have you written? Mind your own business. That's blank. You haven't started yet. Struggling, are you? It's all up here, don't worry. I know exactly what I'm going to write. It's just a question of getting it done. Uh, Flaubert had much the same trouble. He said every word was like tearing the flesh from his body. You go away and do yours. Me? Oh, I've done it. Done it? Last week. What have you done? Mind your own business. Well, it can't be much good if you do it that quickly. It's probably extremely facile. Great works always takes a long time. A Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Stepto. Now, where the hell's the A? Hey? Hey? Well, go on, then. You haven't got much time. Do you mind? I'm trying to concentrate. Hello. He's off. <laughs> oh, You'll be running out of paper soon. Oh, please, I can't create with you in the room. Go away. I said you should have let me do it. <laughs> hey, hundred years of totting. It'll be hundred and ten years by the time you've finished. Oh, shut up. <laughs> now, Tim, where's me notes? Oh, yes, here we are. Here, what's this? That's my tape recorder. Well, the sun was glinting yeah. off oh, the sideboard. In 1926, the uh, during the general strike... Here, yeah, that's Charlie Harris. Of the One of my yes, dad's leadership, we organised a, re <coughs> a relief He's column to feed the general marchers en route, on. Uh, so, uh, uh, so to speak. Flaming liar. Turn that off! He's a liar. It was me tried to organise that. He wouldn't give you the droppings off his nose. <laughs> what else did he tell you? Oh, he gave me some marvellous material, wonderful human interest, about when he got married, he didn't have an house of his own, so he sent his old dad to the pictures, and when his dad got back, all his furniture was out on the curb. The door was locked, and his dad had to go and live Leave in the, the stable. stable. That's not true either. That was me and your grandfather. He's taking credit for everything. That article is going to be a tissue of lies. They're having you on. All right, then. I'll interview you. Get your side of it. Here, sit down there. Oh, 
to say something into this microphone to get the level. What did I say? Anything. Uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Sausages. Sausages? Yeah. Sausages? Yeah. You said there weren't any sausages. <laughs> there weren't any after I'd had them. There's only six anyway. Six? I could have had three of them. It's me who does the work. I'm entitled to go out in the morning with something inside of me. You greedy, hungry, gutted something. Now, look, are you going to interview me or not? I can't sit here all night arguing the toss with you. My time's valuable. I'm cooking a breakfast tomorrow, right? One, two, three, testing. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. That's all right, Test. A Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Steptoe. Interview number 26, sir. Albert Steptoe. <coughs> Mr. Steptoe, what are your earliest recollections of the rag and bone business in Shepherd's Bush? I'm not telling you. What's the point of having an interview if you're not going to say anything? I'm not writing your article for you. I'm not asking you to. I just want some information. I shall then incorporate them into a piece in my own words. I want the Steptoes to be well represented, that's all. I mean, God blimey, Boswell could hardly have written his biography of Dr Johnson if every time Boswell asked him something, Johnson said, I'm not telling you. <laughs> Nada, we'll start again. You just want to pick my brains? I shall pick them straight out of your ears in a minute. <laughs> now then. Mr Steptoe, in your 70 years as a rag and bone man, you must have seen many changes. Yes, I have. Well! Well, what? Well, what are they? Oh. Well, uh, we used to have trams on the roads in them days. Yes. And uh, we haven't got them now. <laughs> are you taking them, Mickey? No. Well, get on with it, then. It must have been difficult to drive a horse and a cart in those days. Oh, yes, it was. Dangerous as well. I remember once having a heavy load on and I got my wheels caught in the tram lines at Marble Arch and I had to go the whole way back to Putney Depot Terminus before I could turn round. Couldn't I have switched the points and sent you to Shepherd's Bush? Are you calling me a liar? Yes. And if you don't take it seriously, I shall switch this machine off and fetch you a knuckle sandwich right up your bracket. <laughs> All right? <coughs> <coughs> now, tell me, Mr Steptoe, Bearing in mind that this article is for the church magazine, so that we don't want any filth, I realise that's placing an unfair handicap on you. Yeah. Uh, can, can you think of uh, any interesting incidents in your long career as a rag and bone man? Uh, yeah. When I was seven, my dad brought me back a home and pigeon off the round. Oh, that is nice. And when we was hard up, I had to go down to the market and sell it for a tanner. Oh, that is very sad. I sold that pigeon 523 times before we went down. <laughs> 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 oh, that is marvellous. Oh, that's the sort of stuff I want. <laughs> you got any more like that? It's like got bags of tape. Yeah. 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 I remember during the Depression, I was totting down the Gold Hawk Road, and this woman comes out and calls me in. She took me upstairs into this bedroom, and there's a man propped up in the bed. She says to me, My husband... Him over there in the bed is very ill and isn't expected to last the night. How much shall you give me for his clothes? So I had a look in the wardrobe and I said, uh, 30 bob including the pyjamas he's wearing now. So she lifted him up, took them off. I gave her 30 bob. She opened the window, turned off the fire, pulled down the blankets and we were straight off down to the boozer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mr. Septo, I hope you don't mind my ringing you. Yes, it's me, the vicar. I just finished reading your article, and it really is first class, absolutely fascinating, just what we wanted. No, I don't intend cutting it at all. I don't pretend to understand all the colloquialisms, but I'm sure the parishioners will. Yes, we're going to press today. 5,000 copies. <laughs> Oh, son. Oh, is, is that the parish magazine? It is. 
Are our bits in there? They are. Hey, let's have a look. I've been trying to get one everywhere here. So have lots of people. They've sold out, have they? No. They've been impounded by the police. <laughs> After the first 500 copies was distributed, the vicarage was raided and the vicar arrested on a charge of publishing obscene literature. <laughs> Calculated to corrupt public morals. I take it your contribution was the crossword puzzle? That's right. There was nothing wrong, was it? No. Not until they filled it in. <laughs> filth! 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 Right the way through from one across to 38 down <laughs> to checkered square of concentrated filth, obscenity and hardcore pornography. Oh, it's not that bad. No worse than me Scrabble games. Not, not that bad. First three old ladies been treated for shock down the Derby and Joan Club. <laughs> well, if they didn't know the words, they couldn't have filled them in, could they? <laughs> no, but I know somebody who will be filled in. I don't know what you're going on about. The vicar didn't say anything. Of course he didn't. Poor old devil. He didn't understand the clues, let alone the answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much again. That's three weeks hard graft on my part at this moment, coming out in smoke from the incinerator down the local nick. When well, you got your copy of the article, what's the matter with you? Yes, I have. And may I add that this, along with the other few copies that eluded the police dragnet, are now changing ends at twice the price of the school kids edition of Oz. <laughs> Here you are. I'm going up to my room. I have just three things to say to you. What's that? Six across, 13 across, <laughs> and 28 down. <laughs> <laughs>